All right, so let's start with a big story that is making headlines around the world at this moment. The war in Ukraine has taken a very dangerous turn this morning. A massive dam has in fact been breached using a blast in southern Ukraine, which has triggered massive floods downstream. Now, Ukraine and NATO have accused Russia of blowing up the dam, but remember, this is territory that Russia controls. And Russia has now blamed Ukraine for actually breaching this dam. In the next few minutes, we'll be taking a look as to what has happened during the day and what the implications of this breach of the Noah Kokovka Dam are likely to be. We'll also explore the one crucial question, whether the warring sides have unleashed the age-old warfare strategy, which of course is flood thy enemy. Now, at this moment, as we speak, there are thousands of people who are being evacuated from their settlements along the southern stretch of Ukraine's Dnipro River. Water from the breached Noah Kokovka Dam has resulted in at least about 16,000 people being in the critical zone for flooding. It has resulted in several streets and town squares getting flooded. The collapse of the barrier at the southern tip of the vast reservoir has unleashed a torrent adding to misery for the thousands of people who've been caught on the front lines of war between Russia and Ukraine. Looking downstream, Russia, remember, controls the left bank of the Dnipro River and the dam itself, while Ukraine, interestingly, holds the right bank, and each side has blamed the other for causing the damage that has triggered the latest crisis in this conflict. Now, Ukraine has accused Russia of deliberately blowing it up. But the question is this, why would Russia want to blow up a dam on a territory that, present, that it presently controls? Now, Moscow may have feared, it is being reported, that Ukrainian forces would have used the road over the dam in its counter-offensive. Russia has called this as an act of sabotage by Ukraine. Kremlin says that the sabotage will deprive the Crimean Peninsula of water. And apart from sustaining thousands of people, the dam also provided cooling water for the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The power plant, which is hundreds of miles downstream, is currently under Russian control again. The flooding has long been used in warfare, although its effectiveness has been debatable. The hydraulic warfare has resulted in the past in a huge humanitarian cost wherever it has been employed. So let's tell you about the incidents in the past where flooding has been used as a weapon of war. The Chinese nationalists used flooding on a massive scale in their war against the Japanese in 1938. The Kuomintang troops unstopped a series of dikes along the Yellow River to stop the invading Japanese forces. This had unleashed a massive water surge that engulfed three of China's provinces. At least about a million Chinese civilians reportedly drowned in the torrent, while more than 12 million people were displaced. Five years later, the British Royal Air Force used bombing of dams as a strategy against the Germans. In May 1943, the RAF, the Royal Air Force, had struck a pair of hydroelectric dams on the Ruhr River. The raids had knocked out power along the river valley, briefly disrupting the German wartime production, and it caused widespread flooding. The warpters had swept away more than 1,500 people back then. At the end of the last century, Saddam Hussein in 1993 had diverted the Tigris and the Euphrates away from the vast wetland in southern Iraq. The Iraqi dictator had ordered the military engineers to drain the Mesopotamian marshes in order to deny the Shia insurgents sanctuary there. It had impacted an estimated 100,000 people at the time. And to give us more perspective in terms of what has resulted in the breach of the Noah Kokovka Dam today, earlier this morning, we're being joined by Mr. Charles Kupchan, who's a senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations and also a professor of international affairs at Georgetown University. So thank you very much indeed for taking time out and speaking to us here on Beyond. Let me begin by asking you this. You know, any time an incident such as this happens, the first question that needs to be asked is Q Bono. Who gains out of this? What do you make of the accusations and counter accusations that have been leveled about the breaching of the Noah Kokovka Dam? And more importantly, who gains out of this? Well, the Ukrainians are claiming the Russians did it. The Russians are claiming the Ukrainians did it. We don't yet have a clear sign, clear evidence 
But it would be very surprising uh, to me if this were an attack carried out by the Ukrainians. Why? Because they're flooding their own citizens. They're distracting themselves from the offensive they are about to begin. Mm -hmm. So it looks pretty clear to me that this is something that was carried out by Russia. Right. Why would Russia do this? Two reasons. One, to try to distract Kyiv from focusing on the offensive. Number two, to widen the river, the southern part of the Dnipro, to make it harder for Ukrainian forces that are on the east, the west bank to get to the east bank and to start going through and against the defenses that Russia has built. So there is a strategic rationale here. All right, very interesting. But also, you know, considering the fact is to have uh, pieces of infrastructure, you know, a dam you'd not normally believe is, is something that the warring factions would touch. But this is a clear breach of a dam that has happened. Uh, but the Russians have argued that this is something that the Ukrainians have done because they want to divert their forces who are being held up at Kherson further north. What do you make of the Russian allegation? You know, the, the, there is a story to be told that Ukraine might have interest in, uh, in blowing up the dam to somehow distract the Russians, to flood some of those areas that the Russians are holding. I think it's a stretch. Countries do not bomb their own dams and threaten their own citizens. If there is a clear strategic advantage here, it is to the Russians because right. it will hamper the coming offensive by the Ukrainian military to cross the Dnipro and to push into what we call the land bridge that connects Crimea to Donbass. Given that strategic rationale, pretty clear to me that the, the likely perpetrator here is Moscow. Very interesting. Now, the Russians, of course, would turn around and say that this was a dam that also provided water to the Crimean Peninsula. This was also the dam that provided the water to cool the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which is presently under the control of the Russians. And therefore, the Russians would say that Ukraine has got a lot of things to gain out of blowing up this dam. Um, do you think there is merit in this argument? Well, as far as we know, the Zaporizhia power plant will still get the water that it needs to cool uh, the, uh, the reactors, which have effectively been shut down. Yes, Crimea is dependent on water from the Dnipro flowing through a canal. And as a consequence, they need that water. Uh, is this a sufficient rationale for the Ukrainians to blow up the dam? No, because they could find other ways to shut down that canal and to hamper uh, Russian operations and quality of life in, in right. Crimea. So the rationale really doesn't make a lot of sense here in All terms right. of why Ukraine would carry out this attack. All right. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Professor Kupchan, for joining us and getting us all those details there on this very big story that we'll continue to track here on Beyond. Bye-bye. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.